Today is Friday, May 10th, 2024, and we are, what's in that bird, at Jericho Road Trail, going up to Cooley Hill. And then from there, Cooley Hill is the site of a fire tower. There should be a connecting trail going over to Coal Hill, which is on the 500 highest list. It's the trail for that is not on the white in the White Mountain Guide, but it's, um, it's a series of trails that are done locally. So we're gonna go over there just because we're already up here. Then we're gonna come back down and drive a little further up. We're on Route 116, so like the Kinsmans and stuff is back here. Uh, we're gonna drive further north and go up Coppermine Trail which ends at a waterfall. And then we'll see where we are. I think that's all we're gonna do today. Uh, this area, I only have, I don't have the new <laughs> White Mountain Guide. So it, in the 30th edition, they talk about how this area down low was gonna be logged in 2017. So I'm not sure what it's gonna look like, but I think it's gonna be mostly kind of open walking for the bottom half on forest roads. We'll figure it out. We are about a third of a mile in right now, and there's a fork. This is not the trail, it's an old forest road. I think it's 480A, and this is the trail. It's marked by a hiker sign and a blaze right there. So we're gonna keep on this way, and I think it stays on road like this for a while before it narrows. And let's see, what have we seen? Lots of wild oats, which is Cecil bellflower, is that what it is? And a couple painted trilliums, which is the first ones I've seen this year. Things are popping. We've got some white violets. I kind of expect to see some trout lilies today somewhere, because I think they're finally starting to bloom. Got a little culvert here. And the first quarter mile definitely had logging stuff, remnants in it. It looks like up here this has been logged also, right in there. All right, so far easy going. You could totally run this. We are about one and two thirty two-thirds of a mile in, and one mile in is where we got on our trail and off the forest road. And I think we've already done the bulk of the climb. So now we're up in this area that's like a ridge. The guidebook said there's really nice walk in here. I just pulled out Merlin see what kind of birds are up here. And we've got a few kinds of warblers. Look at all this moose pool. And oven bird. And uh, white-throated sparrows. Oh. So we have Chestnut-sided warbler, black and white warblers. Uh, what else was in there? Nashville warbler. That's a cool snag. In any case, I've been following moose prints, not new, for quite a while. It's lovely up here. I like the birches. This might be our only view. We're approaching the final push up to the summit of Cooley Hill. Black flies are definitely on. Yeah, get that guy. Right here is Cannon, and I can see the fire tower with my naked eye, although a cloud is starting to overtake it. And then we've got the cannonballs. This is North Kinsman and South Kinsman, and then Kinsman Ridge Trail. So that's probably Mount Wolf right here. Cooley Hill straight ahead of us. 
This area looks to have been logged. Okay, as long as we keep moving. I don't think it bit you, did it? No, okay. I don't think so. I just, as long yeah, as I we keep moving, we'll be good. The... There's a little breeze too, which is nice. Anyway, this is, this is a view. It might be our only one. Here's a red trillium right here. I saw a couple painted trilliums open. First ones of the season for us down near the trailhead. And then we've got tons and tons of wild oats. So many, more moose poop. And lots of violets, mostly white, some yellow, one purple one, which I don't typically see up here. Kinsman's. Okay. <clears throat> we are at around 2,200 feet in elevation, and now we're, we're coming into uh, Spring Beauty, which is Claytonia Virginia. Ginyensis or something like that. And then uh, trout lily. What else did I see up here? I think those are the only things that are kind of new, but you can tell this trail isn't very widely used because this is the trail and it's just filled with trout lily and uh, spring beauty that haven't bloomed yet. Trout lily takes, I mean, they can live two or 300 years apparently and they take a long time to like reach blooming maturity. So it's a little surprising that there are, there's some really good looking um, specimens right in the trail. Look at how pretty those are. These are usually white with a little bit of pink, but sometimes they're really, really, really purpley, like that one. Usually they're kind of like this one. These right here. This one is quite white. They don't last very long, but you, when you get them, you usually get a whole bunch of them, like a carpet. And that's what we're seeing in here. And they really are ranging from white to purple. I don't know what, I mean, they're right next to each other. I don't know what drives that. All right, so we're pretty close. I can see the ridge right ahead of me. As we were coming up uh, past that view out to the Kinsman's, once we got up a little bit higher and back into these woods, I had a, an obstructed view to the opposite side. So looking at, I could look back at the notch, kin, um, Moose Lock on the left and Clough on the right. That was pretty cool to see. And then Black Mountain and some smaller things, Cobble Hill, stuff like that. But I think it would not be like that once the, we, everything leaves out. Here's a nice lichen. It doesn't look very happy. It's pretty dry right now. More trout lilies. They're all over. All right, just about up there. We are at the site of the former fire tower on Cooley Hill. It would have a nice view over here to the Kinsman's. So as I was coming up, we came up behind John here. There was, did you see that spur trail kind of yeah. off to the side? It looked like it went to a view. So when we descend, I'm gonna go out there and take a look. So it looks like it had a nice clear view down into the notch here. I don't know if this has a name. Kinsman Notch, maybe? I don't know. Route 116. And then we'd have the backside of the Kinsman's and Cannon. So I think we'll check that out. I don't know where the trail officially ends, but we're going to continue on anyway to... Where are we now? We're on Cooley Hill. We're going to go to Coal Hill. Is that what it's called? Okay. Which is on the 500 highest. There is a blaze right there. I don't know if that means it continues on, but 
In any case, we're going to finish up this trail and then pop onto a trail from the uh, local trail system to get over to Coal Hill. All right. It's sunny. It's beautiful. There are black flies, but they're not horrible yet. Oh, and this is... What is that? Alder? Is that what it is? It makes berries. I think it has a white flower. And then it has purple berries. Okay, we're going to keep on going. Okay, so that was the end of the trail right at the fire tower, which is right there. You might be able to see a yellow triangular blaze back here. That is part of the yellow trail. We're not going to take that though. We are going to go straight. Wait, how do we go? I want to stay on this for, for a just a little feet, bit. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to take the yellow trail over and then that will continue kind of to the left down to a different trailhead. I kind of expect these to be pretty well marked. They're um, used for hiking and mountain biking, I think. And there is actually a description of it in the White Mountain Guide. But again, I have the <laughs> 30th edition and they were in the process of actually constructing the trails when that book was published. So it doesn't have, you know, it just basically says they plan to do it. But if you look on Gaia, there's a whole bunch of trails and they're labeled. So I believe we're going to be taking mountain bike traverse or something like that. And then we're going to split off of that and go to the left out at a Y intersection. All right, I'm not going to just run this because it's kind of boring, but this is lovely area of woods heading over to Coal Hill and it is yellow blazed. And what can I tell you? We didn't see the intersection, the very first intersection. There's the yellow blaze right there where we wanted to continue straight and not go to the left. Never saw it. So I don't know if that area has been done away with or what, but in any case, we are still heading over on the trail that is, I believe it's called Mountain Bike Traverse. And it was very interesting open area up near the fire tower that was like, it was almost like it had been farmed in the, you know, 1800s or 1900s, early 1900s and then abandoned. It was really weird, open area. And then you almost immediately, it just changed right into this fir forest. Very interesting. Easy going. And we will be coming up to a split, so hopefully it will be marked well. Not like that other one. I think this will be, because I'm not sure that the other one was part of the trail system that was managed. I think it was just a residual logging road or something like that. I mean, it was on there as a, as a trail, but that doesn't mean anything because Gaia is crowdsourced in some regards. If enough people do a trail, it just shows up, like do a bushwhack, they eventually make it a trail. Lots of blowdowns. Not so many on this. I think this is the first one, actually. All right. We keep going. We're about maybe a little over halfway there. This is at the junction, so the trail we've been on turns. And 
Instead, we're going to continue straight on the red. There's a nice sign. Red trail to Coal Hill. And then now we have red blazes and there are a ton of them. <laughs> One there. Maybe they just did this because it's at the beginning. One there. One on a down tree. Another one on this tree. Holy smokes, this is insane. One there. They're like 20 feet apart. <laughs> I don't think that's appropriate use of blazing. But okay. I guess we won't get lost. We are up on the kind of broad summit area. I think the actual summit's going to be right up there, but there's a vista. So let's go see. That's a bonus. I don't really know anything about Coal Hill, except that it's on my list of the 500 highest. I thought the vista would be closer in. <laughs> Glades, three and four, so that must be for skiing. Where is the vista, John? Well, the red keeps going. There, red keeps going. No way to know. I mean, that's that, also a trail. That's, that's a ski trail, because it says Glade uh, something. I think the vista's down here. Is this where the trail loops around or no? no. Okay, so this is going to be... Yeah. Oh, the vista's right here. I can see it. Uh, it's definitely a vista. Oh, there's seats and everything. Look at that. Oh, nice. Okay, I'm as zoomed in as I can go. Oh, that's pretty. I will probably stop this and use my phone to get a video. This is Lafayette. And... North Lincoln and Lincoln. And then that's Canada. It's so hard for me to see in here. Canada's over here. I can see the edge of a ski slope with a little bit of snow left on it. And that is North, North Kinsman and South Kinsman. And then over this way, oh, I gotta look. I don't know. That's super pointy. I mean, hmm. Could that be Garfield? I don't know what that is. I gotta look. Let me look and then I will shoot a more zoomed in video. All right, so this is zoomed in a little bit more. I can actually go, let me go just a little bit more. This is North Twin. Then next to it, right in the center, is Garfield, which looks so strange from this perspective. And then South Twin, now in the center. Over here, North Lafayette and Lafayette in the middle, North Lincoln in the middle, right in front of that is Cannon, and then in the middle is Lincoln, a little haystack, and then these are the cannonballs coming around, North Kinsman and let me just, sorry, move over. Walk, walk, walk. South Kinsman. That is the vista. There are little, little seats here. Yes, sit down and let the black flies feast on you. Oh, that's cool. All right. Coal Hill. Not bad at all. Okay, so we're up on the trail. We're in the general area of the summit. <laughs> We've gone out past this wet area and around, which seems to be the high point. I believe the high point is right there. This rock 
is also quite high. But we are not seeing a canister or anything that marks the summit. And every way we go, like there's a herd path right here, it goes downhill. So I think, I think we've hit it. I don't see anything to sign. Okay. Cole Hill. I, I don't know. Most of them do have a canister, but it's usually if it's a bushwhack, it has a canister. And this is not a bushwhack, so I'm not convinced that there's something to sign, and I hate to waste a lot of time looking for it. I mean, I would come back and do this again anyway, so <laughs> it's okay. All right, we're going to head back the way we came, and once we get past the fire tower remnants, we'll take that spur trail off to the side, see what kind of view we get on Jericho Mountain or Jericho Road Trail to see what it, whether there's a, a good view from there. You don't have to come all the way over to here if you're not doing the 500 highest. This is the view from a little spur trail. If It's not marked on any maps or anything, but I think they might have mentioned it in the guidebook. As you're approaching the uh, site of the former fire tower coming up Jericho Road Trail, just look to your right and you'll see that there's going to be an opening in the woods and there's a little yard path going out. And this is the vista that you get. I'm not zoomed in at all. Go a little bit more. So it's very similar to what we had on Coal Hill, but I don't have the view over to, um, ooh, a bird. That was a hawk, I think. Over to Garfield and the Twins, which would be back in this area. But still a nice view nonetheless. All right, clouds have been in and out, but there's blue skies behind us and coming our way. We are finishing up now. We're in the last two tenths maybe. And once again, back on this huge wide road. It's a little over nine miles, and how long did it take us? Like four and a half hours. We weren't trying to set any land speed records, but we also didn't really hang around too much anywhere. I uh, ran into one other hiker with a dog, and what did I think? I think this was neat. I liked it. There was a variety of trail type, like you had... Uh, hardwood forest, you had fir kind of forest, you had areas that looked like they had been reclaimed homesteading areas, you had some views, you had uh, an area that was grown in with fresh, I guess it had been logged, it was weird, it was up on that ridge, like a wide open area with millions of little tiny trees in it. I don't know, it was, I, I liked it. Interesting. Interesting hike and lots of wildflowers at this time of the year. Tons and tons and tons of moose activity. We startled the grouse. What else? Anything? Oh yeah, we saw a little red eft. You know, the juvenile form of a newt. John spotted that, which was amazing. And yeah, it's a little overcast right now, but it's not raining. And we are at the gate. All right, so we're going to have lunch in our car and then drive up the street and go to look at Copper Mine. I think it's just called Copper Mine Trail with a waterfall at the end and a shelter. Yeah, so we'll go check that out. It doesn't connect to any other trails. It might connect to some... Um, mountain biking trails and stuff like that, but no other White Mountain official trails. We are now at our second location, so we're going to do the Copper Mine Trail, two and a half miles to Bridalvale Falls. You park right off of 
Route 116. You're not allowed to drive this road, but you can walk it. So that's what we're doing. And there's parking probably for maybe 10 cars, maybe more. We're about three tenths of a mile in. And now we're actually getting to the trailhead. A pair of liner mittens. All right. So far, so good. Another wide path. We are a mile in right now. There's a side trail that takes you down to Copper Mine Brook. So you can see this little cascade, which probably looks better in real life than it does on the video. And it's not all that impressive. There's also a not so stealth campsite with a fire ring, which is like right off the trail. And we get up there. Ooh, what is that? That would be an old blaze. Okay, I'm gonna go up this way. There's just a whole bunch of paths all over the place in here, but. You'll see it's like super flat right here. We came down right here. I sort of think that we can get back to the trail over here, but maybe not. Obviously people have camped up here. The trail is literally right along here. It looks like a road bed because probably it is a road bed. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut right here. Okay, so that was a little side unmarked spur. It's mentioned in the guidebook. I mean, didn't seem that great to me, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> so now we're back on the trail. As you can see, it's like a big wide road. And right here, wow, look at that. I believe we go right here because we need to see the waterfall, which is going to be on the same brook. Yeah. There's not really two things much here. That's obviously a forest road, though. I know, I'm just but, saying, but the map doesn't show up. No. All right, so we're one mile in. It's been fast going, pretty gentle incline. Hey, look, an actual blaze. Didn't notice it from back there. Me neither. <laughs> We are 1.3 miles in now, and this is a really nice little area. Very, very close to the trail. So the trail is right there. And it looks like there must have been something here, like a bridge or something at some point. And then you get this nice little slidey rock kind of thing. Rapids. Lovely. Okay. I think that's way nicer than that other spot. And you don't have to go way off the trail. It's nice. Okay, we are inside the FPA now. So almost to the shelter. And there is a bridge. Holy cow. I can't believe it. Which really, I mean, you could totally rock off that. Whatever. <laughs> I'm not going to turn down a free bridge. But come on. There are so many places that are way more difficult. And are not in wilderness either. Like, this isn't... You know what I mean? They're always like, you can't put a bridge because it's wilderness. But there are tough rock hops that are not in wilderness. Okay, that's my rant. Next thing is going to be the shelter. We're going to walk in there, see what it looks like. Probably use their bathroom. <laughs> we are at the shelter now. Actually, the trail came up. It looks like the trail is here, but it's not. 
<laughs> the trail came up through this washed out area. And then bam, you're right at the shelter. It's got space in it for, I don't know, six people. I guess it depends on how you sleep, eight people. And it is literally right, right on the water. So there's really no place for a tent. If you come up here and it's full, you'd have to go down a little bit. Or if you had like a very small tent, you'd be right there. And I don't know where the privy is, but there's gotta be one. Usually it's back a little bit. There's some brand new timbers in here too. I'm not sure what they're gonna do with those. Right here. Okay, and there's neat ledgy areas. And what else? No bear box that I could see. And it looks like the trail goes, continues on right there. We're almost to the waterfall. But I don't know where the privy is. There has to be one. Could it be through here? Could it be right here? Privy? Yeah, or over there. Let me walk up here and see if I see it. I mean, there has to be one. Can you tell I have to pee? Because that's why I'm looking for a privy. There's so much water here, I don't want to go. It's supposed to be like 250 feet away from water. All right. I'll let you know if we find one. If not, next stop is the waterfall, which is like a tenth of a mile away. Very close. Okay, I did not find a bathroom, which is really weird, but I did find two areas that you could conceivably put a tent, even though you're not supposed to. And one of them is obviously right here. It's huge, right next to the water. And the other one is right down uh, across the stream from where the shelter is. And then this is the waterfall, which is pretty impressive. I just can't believe there's no outhouse. There's gotta be something somewhere. I missed it. I don't know. This is Bridal Veil Falls. There's another Bridal Veil Falls, at least one, in Crawford Notch. Pretty. All right. I think I'm drilled in too much. All right, so this is on an iPhone, zoomed out, so you can get the whole thing. Pretty cool. Looks like it'd be a great place to just cool off on a hot day right there. Very, very close to the shelter also. Like, they said it was 0.2 away. There's no way, it wasn't even 0.1 away. Very close. All right, we are coming down to the end of this hike. It should be a little under five miles. This section runs through um, like people's backyards, basically on the right-hand side here. There's some houses. It had 1,100 feet of gain, but the whole trail was like very gentle like this. I don't know if you can see that the decline is just very smooth and gentle. So it was easy, an easy hike. The shelter is right at the waterfall, pretty much. So if you're into waterfalls and you want to do an overnight, that might be a good place to go. Short hike, but the trail doesn't continue on. So that is the end of the trails at the waterfall. So it's kind of weird that there's a shelter up there, but it is what it is. I did not see a privy anywhere or a bear box. And what else? Uh, parking, I think there's a space for around 10 cars, could be more, right on the edge of Coppermine Road at the junction of 116. And yeah, I mean, I think, I think they get a fair amount of usage on this trail, just based on how, how nicely it's maintained. I think probably if I were going to look for something to do on a rainy day, and I wasn't looking to hit a 4,000 footer like hail or gale head, go for a waterfall and this is a good choice. All right, successful day. So first thing we did was 
what is it called? Jericho Road Trail, which I really liked. And this one is called Copper Mine Trail. 